An old friend of Adam Cole shows up to AEW. What does this mean for the Young Bucks? That's coming up. I'm Travis from Wicked Bitter, and you're watching Dropping the Elbow, Dude. A little bit of the bubbly. AEW had their holiday bash episode last night on AEW Dynamite, and it's one to talk about for sure. Before we get into that, make sure you guys subscribe and hit like to this video. If you like content surrounding WWE, and more specifically AEW, we're doing a lot more AEW videos lately than anything else. So if you want to be in touch with us, you want to join our faction, you want to be all elite, hit that subscription button, hit the notification bell, Hit the like button. Let's get this thing up there, man. Let's get some likes and subscribes to this channel. Let's get into the real stuff here. AEW Dynamite had Holiday Bash. First match of the night, Adam Cole versus Orange Cassidy. What a great way to start the night. Adam Cole came out easily. One of the best songs, if not the best song in all of AEW. Comes out and I, I jam every time he comes out to this song. I love it. He comes out, Orange Cassidy, I love his song too, by the way. Uh, I love both of these guys. They're both great. I know a lot of them get a lot of slack. A lot of people have certain p opinions on both of them it's fine it's great it's pro wrestling you got to stand out orange cassidy definitely stands out he's got a different gimmick than anyone else i've never seen it before and adam cole he's got his own thing as well and, and, and adam cole thrives best when he's a heel and he's got people surrounding him which brings me to this last night kyle o'reilly an old friend of Bobby Fish and Adam Cole. He showed up last night to Holiday Bash, and a lot of people were anticipating and expecting this debut. We didn't know when it was going to happen, but last week when Adam Cole mentioned to the Bucks that he has a big present for them, one could only think, maybe that's maybe that's Kyle O'Reilly. And sure enough, it was. I, for a split second, thought that he was teasing that just to get us thinking that it's going to be O'Reilly and then Omega would come out. But no, I'm glad they went with O'Reilly. I'm glad he's back. But what does this mean for the Bucks now? No one knows. I they can go they can go various different routes here. They I don't know how soon Omega's coming back, but they could have Omega chill out for a little while, and they can just tease the the split, the breakup between the Bucks, the the. I mean, I mean, Adam Cole is. I feel like Adam Cole should stay with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I liked Cole with the Bucks, but when you think about the bigger picture here, if you can have Adam Cole and Bobby o, uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly team up against Omega and the Young Bucks, I mean, just think about the quality of matches we're gonna have. You're talking Fish and O'Reilly versus the young bucks you're, you're you're talking adam cole versus omega these rivalries are going to be amazing and i'm going to call it right now i'm going to say bobby fish and o'reilly versus the young bucks are going to be some of the best tag team matches we see next year and i'm going to say adam cole versus kenny omega might be the best if not one of the best rivalries we're going to see next year in 2022 a lot to be excited about in AEW. For sure. So, uh, yeah, he came out last night. He debuted. He showed up. He helped Adam Cole win. And then at the end of the match, the Bucks came down with a confused look on their face. What's going on? Why is he here? Now, you know, first you bring in Fish. Now you're going to bring in O'Reilly. And the Bucks wanted an explanation. This is going to be something they can tease. They can have Cole be, I mean, they could all be cool at first and then kind of tease here and there the separations. Or they can just have a huge faction, which. I don't want them to have. I don't want the elite to gain two more members in Bobby Fish and O'Reilly. I kind of want it to be the three versus three. And honestly, now that we're talking about Cole, a lot of people have been very disappointed and very let down and, and very discouraged with the way that Adam Cole has been booked in AEW. And uh, I've just I've I've said it on multiple platforms, social media platforms. You just gotta have just a tiny slither of patience with this because you think about it. Kenny Omega needed some time off. That was the way to buy time right now for Adam Cole. Adam Cole was kind of sticking around in limbo, and he's had the Bucks, luckily, and and they've they've been great together. But you gotta you gotta realize that the bigger picture here, the one that the plan all along, was to do this exact scenario that we're in right now. And finally, 
Adam Cole is going to shine like he has shined in NXT, and, and I wouldn't be concerned if I were if I were fans of AEW. I wouldn't be concerned if I were fans of Adam Cole. Trust me. I mean, this guy is going to be the future of AEW or one of the futures. I know we, there's a lot of talk about pillars and stuff like that, but trust me, Adam Cole is going to be one of the top guys for a long time in AEW if he stays in this company. Speaking of pillars, another guy I want to talk about here, switching gears a little bit, and I hate saying switching gears because Michael Cole in WWE says it all the time. Why? Why did I just do that? <clears throat> I'm going to have to think of something else to say other than that because I don't want to do switching gears. But to talk about someone else, Griff Garrison. Yeah, I've always kind of liked him a little bit. I wasn't crazy about him. But there's just recently, and I think it's because partly I've watched some of Sammy, uh, Sammy Guevara's vlogs. Uh, I, I'm kind of taken to Griff Garrison a little bit because I, I feel like he's not really talked about that much. And I think during his match during, against Malachi Black uh, on Dynamite, they mentioned that uh, Griff Garrison's only 23 years old. Super young. And he's got a lot of time to develop. He's got a lot of time to, to get better at both promos and in ring and he's pretty good already in the ring um I, w I would watch out for griff garrison in the future there's a lot of there's there's a lot of hidden gems in aew that i don't think a lot of people are talking about they talk about the four pillars uh, which is great i mean because you know you got darby jungle boy mjf uh sammy guevara i mean Britt baker has been thrown in there by cm punk uh which are all accurate and true but there's a lot of people who are not considered the pillars who could very well be shining stars for them later on. You're talking about Brian Pillman Jr. and, and Griff Garrison, just to name a couple guys. I mean, I, I kind of like Daniel Garcia. I don't know how old he is. He's not that bad, though. I mean, I'm just throwing guys out there that I could see being key players in AEW for a long time. Um, we got to talk. I know there, uh, there are a few things happen on Dynamite. By the way, uh, they mentioned that JR is coming back in commentary next week. Can't wait for that awesome to see jr back love jr miss him uh i've see, i've been seeing his posts on social media um about all of his treatments and 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 taking care of his, his uh skin cancer and everything like that jr you're probably never gonna watch this but we all love you we all want you back um we'll be happy to have you back uh it's yeah it's really great to see he's doing okay and that he'll be back next week uh although i do love taz on commentary i've always loved taz on commentary forever he's great um speaking of taz we got to talk about hook he wasn't there last night he didn't wrestle last night and it's smart because i feel like they're going to be putting hook a lot on rampage the viewership is not as wide uh it's more of like a proving ground for some people and for hook i think it is that um i really like hook and i don't know why i just i look at hook and this is again another thing about the pillars i mean i'm not saying hook is a pillar and i'm not saying he's the best in the ring because he definitely needs some more time to develop in the ring but he's super young and he's got the look and he's got the walk he's got the swag he's got the song he's got everything he needs right now and and, and you know what to be this cool like i want to be hook when i grow up he's that cool okay and, and I, i'm i'm older than hook i know that i'm trying not to think of that but i am i want to be him still when i grow up hook is is just that cool guy that you just you just there's something about him he doesn't even have to say much I mean, you remember when Darby got over and he barely said anything? It was more because of his crazy antics, jumping off shit and, and whatever. That's great. Love Darby. But but Hook, I, I don't know what it is about him. But he's just really just mysterious and cool. He's just that cool guy in school that you just want to be friends with. And, and I love that. And and, uh, and I, I, I can't wait to see what comes from Hook. Um, you know, obviously he's got the look for a, a, a heel. I don't know what he can be as a babyface. I know I'm reading too much into it and thinking too much in, in the future right now. We should just enjoy what we have right now, which is a very good reception and liking to Hook. And I think it started off as like an ironic, just like the send Hook comments and, and, and chants and signs and all that kind of stuff. And then Taz mentioned that night when he debuted, he's like, hey, you wanted me to send Hook? Well, I sent him. And you know what? Thank you, Taz. You just did everybody a service by sending Hook. Love that guy. Can't wait to see what else happens for him and with him. Um, we got to move on a little bit here. Uh, our main event. I know I'm skipping quite a bu uh, quite a few things in the middle. First of all, AEW's tag team division. I don't know if you know this, but now, especially with the addition of Kyle O'Reilly, 
AEW's tag team division might be the best tag team division I think I've ever seen in one company at any given period of time. I don't care if you don't like my opinion on that. That's my opinion. It's a hot take. I don't know if how wild of a take it is to me. I know there's going to be people out there going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. What about Japan? And then uh, That's fine. You have your own opinion. I have mine. And this is not even to mention the possibility of bringing in the Briscoes, the rumored Briscoes to show up to AEW. You do that, and this tag team division is sealed. It's done. This is the b- Santana Ortiz hasn't even won the tag team championships yet, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm forgetting. There's just so mon- so many tag teams, and, and AEW has a huge roster regardless. Um, I do believe that eventually they're going to have to expand their shows, either make Dynamite three hours or make Rampage two. And I know a lot of people are like, you don't want to put Rampage three hours because look at Monday Night Raw. There's a difference. And I know it's typical for a fan of a different company to say this. There is a difference. See, WWE will have three hours of, of Raw and only... 20 minutes worth of matches go on in a three-hour show. AEW is not like that. And even though there are episodes where there are more promos lately in AEW and in, in Dynamite, I you know I know that's happened. You can see it happening. Uh, that's just because finally we're getting development of characters. We're finally getting vested in characters. And, and I mean, Dan Lambert comes out there and he just mouths off for like 10 minutes. And, and it's fine because he's good at it. And, and it's going to lead to something. And it's helping boost Ethan Page and, and Scorpio Sky, who are both phenomenal, by the way. I mean, AEW's roster has so much talent. You don't know what to do with everybody. You have to come up with another solution. You have to give two hours to Rampage or three hours to uh, Dynamite or maybe just another whole show. I mean, there's just so much to do. And and AEW is not one of those – like if they had a three-hour show, maybe have an, maybe like 30 minutes to an hour worth of of promos and then two hours worth of wrestling. I don't know. But it would definitely be a lot more wrestling than, than WWE handles their three-hour shows. Not here to compare. That's just a side note. Take it. However you want to take it. Let's get to the main event. CM Punk, Sting, Darby Allen versus FTR and MJF. I loved this match. And how cool is it to see Sting come out, decked out in CM Punk's face paint. Like like CM Punk's logo, the fists and the lightning bolts coming down underneath his eyes. I mean, how awesome was that? And, and CM Punk's t-shirt the whole match. How cool was that? And and to make it even better, CM Punk comes out wearing retro Sting face paint. I, back from the WCW days. I, I mean, Stinger. I, I can't. This was one of the one of the coolest things I've seen happen in AOV so far. And it's such a minor thing for a lot of people, but for me, when you when you've seen CM Punk before, the kind of guy who is just different from everybody else, he's just you're so used to a bitter CM Punk in in, in WWE that you're just not used to seeing a, a, a CM Punk that's happy, that's enjoying what he's doing, who who goes out there like smiling, like he, he you can you can tell that he genuinely is having a great time. And I love to see that for a guy who I followed his whole career, and I've loved him since day one, and huge fan of him, you know, in WWE, and now in AEW, I've been over the moon that he's back, but I've been wanting more meaningful uh, rivalries with CM Punk, it's understandable, but this main event here, I mean, it was great from top to bottom, I I, I mean... uh, there was one scary part where MJF gets thrown over the top by Sting and it looks like he lands on his head and I gasped and I jumped out of my seat and I was just like, oh no, don't tell me he's dead. He can't be dead. Like, we need MJF. We got to protect that man at all costs, okay? Uh, MJF is great. It looks like he was fine. He even tweeted later on that he's fine, but that was definitely a scary looking bump. And, and then Sting from the top rope. Sting from the top rope. Sting. Dude's like 60 million years old. Jumping off the top. And I loved it. And he's great. And he still moves fine. I mean, who, who would have thought this thing would be like this? Um, at this age. Uh, and, and you know, that's not, even, that's not even a slight to him. I'm not even trying to insult him. I mean, it's just amazing that he can still go like that at that age and perform that well. Uh, love Sting. And, and, I've, I, and I, when the match ended, it's just seeing Sting go over and kind of like put his arm around punk and like hug him and stuff like that. It's just a, it's just a different like feeling. It's just something I never thought I would ever see in one ring at the same time. CM Punk and Sting. 
I mean, this is generational gaps here. I mean, and and two guys who were with two separate companies at two separate times, and then Sting came to WWE when Punk wasn't there anymore. So it's kind of cool to see these two interact when you've never seen it before. And just to see the amount of respect that each one of them have for one another, it's very a cool thing. Because you do hear a lot of negative things about Punk, and you know that Sting's such a a, a great stand up guy and everything like that, and just the and, and just the mutual respect there, and, and uh, you know it's just really cool to see. Um, great main event. Tony Khan, by the way, is always giving us something to go home happy with or 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 to talk about, and I'm always excited to watch AEW. I'm always excited to watch Rampage. I'm always excited to watch uh, Dynamite. Rampage. I'm excited when I'm awake to watch it because. When that comes on that late, sometimes I've had a long day, long week. You know, I, I clock in for the first half hour, and then around 10.30, I start to pass out. Rampage is still great, though. I'll always watch it like another day or something like that if I can't make it that night. But Dynamite is always on point, man. It really is. It's really great. Also, something else to note, um, Nyla Rose lost to Ruby Riot. No, Ruby Soho. Screwed up there. Ruby Soho. Ruby Soho will be moving on in the tournament. I really think it's going to come down to Jade and Soho in the finals. I know. I, I mean, if you watch other episodes, I've been saying that for a while now. Definitely think Jade is going to the finals regardless of who she was facing. And it doesn't matter who she's facing. I think Jade Cargill is going to win that TBS championship. You can't take the women's title off of Britt Baker because she's she's just she's too hot. And I don't mean that in a physical way. She's 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 I mean she is, but she's too hot right now. She's like the 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 top woman in the women's division. You can't get that title off of her right now. She's just gonna run with it. And Jade, you gotta give her something. She's a beast, you know, she's gonna come in and she's gonna win the TBS title. That's great. I, and I'm really interested to see, and I'm kinda jumping all over right now, but I'm really interested to see with the move to TBS what AEW is going to do with some of these titles like the actual TNT title I wonder if they're going to keep it as TNT title or, or change the name of it or what uh, I guess maybe TNT because it's it's Rampage is still going to be on TNT and maybe actually that title gets defended on Rampage all the time I don't know we'll see um, but definitely a lot to be excited about um, it, It's uh, you guys let me know did you like the Holiday Bash I mean part 2 is coming on Christmas Day on Saturday that should be a great night as well. They're putting a lot of matches up. I have a feeling it's going to be longer than an hour. I'm not sure, though, uh, just by the amount of matches they've advertised for it. Um, either way, very excited to watch AEW on Christmas Day because I definitely will be watching that. And uh, I will come back with another video to do uh, the review for Rampage. So, yeah, you guys let me know if you liked Holiday Bash's episode, if you were cool with the whole, the whole CM Punk's face paint and sting face paint and that match itself and all the other matches that happened on the card uh i mean it's it's just great from top to bottom i was entertained time flies when i watch aw because it's so good um yeah so let us know and uh yeah before you do just make sure you, you subscribe to this video give us a like and, and then comment let us know some stuff about you and what you like about the the aw show and, and you know let's get interactive here i want to know what you guys think about it but uh, until then just remember this before i go Tony Khan loves you. He really does.